Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Donnybrook, the last one for April. Good to have you along. And we have many things to talk about as there are proposals to open up governments in the age of coronavirus. Let's get to it, but first meet our panelists, starting with the news director for the Big 550 KTRS. She is Wendy Weiss, along with one of our founders, from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Bill McClellan. Another founder, back in 1987, he was there, man. Ray Hartman, now with the Big 550 KTRS, the host of In the Know, weeknights at 9, and columnist for the Riverfront Times, and he's written a real doozy for this week. And Alvin Reed always writes doozies for the St. Louis American, stlmag.com. You hear him on 590 AM and 97.1 Bill McClellan, we're going to start with you because three members of the St. Louis County Council today, Tim Fitch, Mark Carter, and Ernie Trakis, have released a proposal hoping, up, hoping to open up St. Louis County on Monday, at least partially for business. Eureka had planned on opening up on Monday in defiance of St. Louis County orders and guidelines. They've decided just this afternoon to push that back till the middle of May. However, Franklin County has opened up in whole or in part and just wondering what do you think about this because the state's kind of opening up illinois is not the city is not the county's not but we'll have saint charles county executive steve elman later and he'll talk about how his county is opening up so what are your thoughts well i'm i'm sympathetic to the outstate counties who want to open up who don't have many cases at all and and i know that on a, an epidemiologist would say it makes no sense, but I'm sympathetic to them. Uh, Eureka, a little less sympathetic and totally unsympathetic to the people who want to open up St. Louis County now, the three Republicans. I, I think that's irresponsible and just play into the crowd. Those are my thoughts. Well, I'm Mayor, Sh go ahead. No, go ahead, Wendy. Mayor Sean Flowers was, you know, he was gung ho and really defiant and kind of sticking his thumb in Sam Page's eye. But today, to his credit, he's listening to the business owners. He's listening to the residents who are saying, we are not ready. This We're not comfortable with this. And he is, he is, he's jumping off of, the, of that train. So I would not be surprised if the aforementioned council member, the, the council members of the aforementioned three, Fitch, Trachis, and Harder, if they don't also do a little, you know, uh, second guessing and, and maybe decide that this isn't a great idea. That's interesting. I, I, no, Ray, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's you your turn. Right. It's all right. Well, I am, first of all, I'd like to condemn the words of my fellow founder. I, I, am, I am sympathetic to the restaurant owners and the hair salon owners and the boutique owners in St. Louis County and the city as much as anything, because they have to stay closed. And the reason they need to stay closed is the same reason that people in St. Charles County and these other counties that seem to feel disconnected are, and that is we should be listening to health experts. And the state of Missouri is not compliant with the advice of 14 days of decline. And we all want to open. And all the people here want to open as bad as anybody else. This is about our health. And we are connected to Franklin County. And when they open, people from St. Louis are going to go to Franklin County to get their hair cut or whatever, which is grossly unfair to our businesses here. Mm. And it's, it's, we're all connected. And the epidemiologists are right. We need to listen to the healthcare folks. I, and none of us want to wait forever. If I can cut in. I don't know anybody who's going to drive to Franklin County to get a haircut. I need a haircut as much as anybody. And, I mean, I kid friends and say, hey, let's go to Georgia and get a haircut. But in, in all seriousness, I don't think that 
St. Louis I, residents are going to be rushing to Franklin County to get ahead. I don't know, maybe that that specific example, but I think it's going to be a lot of. No, I, I think great, a lot of great, you bring up a good point. You know, Eureka is half in St. Louis County and the other half in Jefferson County. So you could easily go from one side of the border to the other if Jefferson County loosens its restrictions. And I will say one thing, Ray, I was very surprised because I, I talked to Greg Storch of. Um, you know, Wash U, he's an infectious disease specialist, and I asked him about this very question, and he said, you got to use common sense. There are some counties in this state where they have very few cases and zero deaths. And when you think about it, they shouldn't really be treated the same as, you know, some of the zip codes in the city of St. Louis. Perhaps not, but there should be some kind of a buffer. If you have an adjacent county, to my mind, whether they're getting their hair cut in Franklin County or whether they live in Franklin County and they're driving into the city to work or vice versa, that's the way that this spreads exponentially. I, I have, I know what you're saying about the, the central part of the state or Laclede County or Phelps County. Those are not adjacent to large metropolitan areas. So mm -hmm. fine, go ahead, open up. But if you are adjacent to a large metropolitan area, you're endangering everybody. And Franklin County is part of what we call the St. Louis region, correct? Sure. Correct. Mm -hmm. So thus, I mean, that's where it's kind of out of line. Um, with Eureka, they may have capitulated. I think part of that was business owners probably saying like, um, what you're telling us to do is we're free to open our business. So I bring my employees back who are now on unemployment or furlough or whatever, and nobody comes in. I'm losing more money now than I was when I was closed. Um, I think they're, these decisions are based upon, I don't care any longer, okay? And by the way, they're, they're, I they're, they, don't care, they don't That's care true. what medical experts say. They don't, they don't care. You're, it's like rationalizing well, with uh, a child who has made their mind up or whatever. Um, I mean, it's just, they don't care. And they Charlie, made a one, one thing where and I, I think am there's a, I think there's also a rush to um, not be on the right side. But what's going to happen is, okay, on June 1st, May 15th, whatever, the county opens up. Now, the three Republicans on the county can say, like, it would not have opened up if I, we had not stood up to Sam Page. We would have been mm. in lockdown till Labor Day if I had not stood up to Sam Page and these draconian governmental blah, blah, blah. This okay. is all game playing right can I, now. Charlie, can I say something real quick? Real quick, because I, I want to get I your agree with Alvin. I agree with Alvin about the politics of this, but one thing that needs to be pointed out, I don't like the messaging right now that says we're, it's indefinite. I think, I think the messaging ought to be, look, we plan to open as soon as we can. We're listening to the health experts, and and as soon as we start showing a decline, we're going to do it. The messaging in this, in particularly in the county, I think, has been we're closed indefinitely, and I understand where that freaks out owners because we do need to see a light at the other tent, other end of the tunnel. I just think Alvin's right about the politics. We really should be arguing about two or three weeks here. Well, I don't think that, that's what the Republicans have done. They have three phases. One starts the first of. May, the Listen, second is like the 15th, and the third is June 1st. Okay, Ray, I do want to move on to uh, the column you wrote for the Riverfront Times. This is new news, that the St. Louis Cardinals are going to receive federal tax credits through the Coronavirus Aid Relief Economic Security Act. Tell us about that. First of all, it's not a column, it's just a blog post, and it was not snarky or pejorative okay. or anything. It was just straight news. First for everything. Yeah, well, no, it, it really was. It was channel my old daily newspaper days. But the, the news story is, and I think it is a news story, the Cardinals have applied for tax credits, not the PPP, the, the, the uh, employee program that was controversial in the Lakers, but it is under COVID-19, under the CARES relief. And it's interesting because they, they have not been shy about messaging that they're, which they have every right to, that they're paying their employees to the end of May 30. First, which, by the way, every team at the Oakland Athletics is doing in Major League Baseball, but they're getting help. They're the only one I know of that's that's at least public. You know, the, now that we asked them, that is seeking CARES money. And when the Lakers did it uh, on the on the PPP side, the the what, what do they call that? The the uh, payroll the program protection for workers. Something. You know, it, it. the point is, this is coming out of the CARES pie. I don't think the Cardinals 
should have asked for it myself. Uh, but the column is just straight news because I don't know any other sports. For, really, you can make the same case for every other franchise in the country to, to get it. And I think a tax credit you don't have to pay back is more valuable than a loan. So we'll see what well, happens. Well, I would say, right, just to defend the Cardinals, and I'll be happy to do that, of course. You know, <laughs> if it's in the legislation and the Democrats and the Republicans voted for it unanimously and the president signed That's it right. and it says they can get the money, then, hey, uh, they are yeah. a huge employer in downtown St. Louis. And, in fact, uh, you know, we sh if, if other organizations are applying for money, and we know a lot are, then why would we deny the Cardinals? Okay. Uh, if... The, the the Taylor um, enterprise enterprise to just laid off two thousand people. Should they apply for it? For the I'm sure team? they have. I'm, I'm sure they have too. But I mean, aren't we kind of like I man? I, this just ain't right. Kind of at some point, you just always have to say like this isn't right. I you know, think it. <laughs> I I I think it feels that way. I know what you're saying, Alvin. It that it's that initial. You know, I went bananas when I saw the Carnival Cruise Lines, you know, that they were included in all of this when they do not employ people who live in this country. They are, you know, they have ports all over the world. But I, I think that any tax attorney is going to tell any CEO or CFO that, hey, as Charlie said, you're silly not to try. And, oh, if, and if you're willing to take any potential public fallout and you know when all of this is over then why not well, I, the that's, I think get hammered. Cynical. This, this, this is not who it's meant for though i, I mean I this, this money you know the cruise ships is another thing because some of them aren't even uh registered in the united states they don't pay taxes they shouldn't get anything but th this let's take care of all the small businessmen and the restaurant owners that ray was talking about before we start giving money to mr dewitt well, and the thing about it is the, the Lakers got just hammered for getting $4.6 million loan that they had to pay back. And again, I don't know anything. Normally, Charlie, you're right. I mean, when the Cardinals file their taxes, they should take everything available to them. I get that. But this is a fund set up as an emergency by our Congress, $2.4 yeah. and it's going to come from somebody. Hey, and, I do want to point out that Carnival Cruise I just, Lines... I, uh, I just don't think they should have asked okay. for it. Okay. Uh, don't forget, uh, Carnival Cruise Lines CEO a is a fan. St. Louis guy, Arnold Donald, yeah. and you, Ray, you mentioned the Oakland Athletics. They're owned by a St. Louis guy, Lou Wolf. Uh, so we broke in St. Oh, Louis. Oh, well, then that's okay. <laughs> Well, Wendy, uh, what about, okay, we're, we're learning that Yadi Molina might test the free agent waters, say it ain't be so, the future Hall of Famer, possibly in another team's uniform for the uh, 2021 or 2022 seasons. What do you think of that, Wendy? Well, it's, it's, it was just, it wasn't the unkindest cut of all, but it's right up there, isn't it? I mean, it, it's like when you think, you think that things can't get any more bizarre then you you know you 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 introduce the thought in your mind of Yadier Molina in a Cubs uniform, God forbid, or you know a Nationals uniform. But yeah, in an ESPN phone interview yesterday, he said that this has really changed. This being the pandemic, I presume, has changed everything. And that while he was willing to just sort of fade off into the sunset, you know, now that he you know after this year, after this year, since there is no this year as has been pointed out, um, then he's really kind of feeling he's behind the eight ball. And what's, you know, this has been, it's the great equalizer. And, you know, we're seeing that wealthy people and the celebrity athletes and, and all of those folks, they're not pinched the way the rest of us are pinched, certainly. And certainly there are a lot of people who are really struggling right now, but they're dealing with the future. And that's, I, I I think it's a possibility. Can I speak as the longest standing Cardinal, lifelong Cardinal fan on this panel and probably the least popular Cardinal fan in town now? I I think we got to keep Yachty. I, I think we should get a federal tax credit if necessary to keep Yachty. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to see Yachty retire as a Cardinal. He's a Hall oh, of Famer already. Yeah. And but I got to tell you, talking even, about I don't care if he's hitting 220. He's such a great catcher. All right, I, we're we're talking about a contract extension. What does that have to do with the pandemic virus? <laughs> well, that's I mean, he cited like things <laughs> I, changed I up, up to now. I was a loyal Cardinal forever, but then the pandemic virus. 
And I'm thinking, like, well, what, what what do you say? Like, life is short, so I need another 15, 20, 20 million if I were to come back. I mean, the Cardinals were going to offer him a chance to come back and play after next year. We're haggling about money. He's trying to get more money to stay here. What does that have to do with the pandemic virus? I I mean, I want more money. Well, because he's afraid he's going to lose a season, Alvin. I just want to correct you on one thing. Uh, I don't think you have to worry about uh, Yadier Molina wearing a Cub uniform. He's a great player, but we have Wilson Contreras and Victor Caratini. (laughs) So we're not in the market for a uh, 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 catcher. I'm going to tell you something. We lost some uh, top name athletes. In this town, Kurt Warner and Brett Hall, and man, you guys were here when Steve Carlton got away. Then he won what four Cy Youngs. It would be tough to lose Yachty, Albert Pujols. Pujols but these Hernandez, things happen. Keith Hernandez. Well, Keith, Keith Hernandez. Hernandez had to go. Real well, Whitey Whitey boys. Remember Rogers Hornsby was <laughs> traded. <laughs> Read hey, Whitey's boys. Story of the Alvin, Cardinals. Yeah, it tells the story. I, I remember when McClellan was doing that joke. When it was Mark McGuire and Mark Grace. Remember? I think that was Mark Grace. Okay. <laughs> Alvin Reed. The St. Louis County Council did indeed give up its oversight authority when it came to spending federal dollars. You know, about $170 million are coming into St. Louis County. And this week, in a 4-3 to three vote, uh, the Democratic members of the council voted to give up their oversight responsibilities and let County Executive Dr. Sam Page make those decisions on his own. Will there be any ramifications? Will the voters be concerned about this in August during the primary? Well, you mentioned the primary, yes, and I think Mark Matavani figured that too because he wrote a letter to the council telling the council, don't give up your right to watch this money. Now, totally political. Oh, by the way, I'm running for county council. I mean, but he's right. I And, and then the shenanigans where... Well, we needed a fifth vote, and then suddenly we don't need a fifth vote, and it's four to three, and it's all the Democrats, Democrats on one side and Republicans on the other. Boy, this is a bad look for Sam Page right here, and I just don't get it. I I just don't understand why it had to go down like this. I mean, it's hey, I'm going to make myself and my fellow party look bad. Let's go that route. Now I know it happens all the time on both sides of the aisle, but. Boy, this, this is a head scratcher here. I don't get it. And it's wrong. It's wrong. I don't care how long it takes to divvy out this money, divvy out this money in a way that's responsible to every voter in St. Louis County, regardless of your party. I, what's especially wrong, first of all, we should add that Jake Zimmerman is right there with Mark Montavani in condemning his own party in the Democratic Council, both of them. You know, and, and, and so both of them have spoken very directly in opposition to their own party on this. And the reason is, is what you just said. It's so obvious and they control the council. It's so unnecessary. Mm. Most of this, uh, this $175 million coming through is, is going to be earmarked and directed by the federal government. We all know what it's for. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be contentious. And if it were contentious along partisan lines, they have the votes. So there was no reason for this. It's a self-inflicted wound. And, you know, I don't think it's debatable. Bill, do you see any losers here? Oh, yeah. I mean, the Democratic Party is a big loser. Demoralize your own side uh, and alienate the independents is bad. And, and Jill Shupp, I thought she had a good chance to beat Ann Wagner because I didn't energize the Republicans. Lisa Clancy has done it. No, I, I think well, what that, was really Nicole Galloway was, and Jill Shuck are the big ridiculous. losers. Not even in the what same was really, What was really fascinating watching Sam Page's uh, press conference, as I do daily when he's his thrice weekly uh, press conferences, these COVID updates, he opened up one of them, and I think it might have been the one where he signed the, the CARES Act for the county by referring to the fact that it was his anniversary, uh, the day that the county council had voted that that for him to take the place of Steve Stanger. And I'm sure I heard him refer to that as a the previous criminal administration. And he did promise transparency. And so this is this is so contradictory unless he is concerned about the optics of any delay when it comes to moving forward with getting the PPE 
to the places on the front line that need them. As a doctor, I I don't know what he's what he's thinking. Yeah. Well, hey, I, can I disagree? Reed. Charlie, let me disagree with Bill. Real, real quick, all, because we're running out of time, Ray. Okay, as always, first of all, you know this that. isn't about Lisa Clancy. It's about Sam Payne. Second of all, oh, Matt, oh my Matt God, Matt Matt County Council, right? I I know, but the, the, the point is that elections in August it'll have zero impact on the November elections of Nicole Galloway. No, no, and, no, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, let me argue with that for one minute, Charlie. You, you know, whenever you give a lot of government money away, some goes to the wrong people and so, and some right people don't get it. And by, by the county council saying there'll be no uh, accountability, you know, we're it. When the money goes to the wrong people, the Republicans are going to be able to pin the tail on the donkey but it, in November. No. Bill, in November, the, first of all, the, the Jill's election depends on Donald Trump, and she's going to win it because of that. And, and Nicole McGowan in the same way. Those races have nothing to do with St. Louis County government. Hey, Alvin Reed, I want to ask you about summer in the city. Back of my neck is dirty and gritty. How about the Blues possibly hosting NHL teams throughout the summer? That's one proposal in the NHL. The Cardinals might be in one of three southern cities, probably San Antonio or Scottsdale or something like that. And, of course, playing in front of empty stadia. And then the Muni is talking about delaying its season uh, and shortening it as well. What do you think, Alvin? Well, I, the playing before fans and, and different places, I think it's important. I really do, and I don't want to sound just like Luke Rotney here, but sports are important, I think, for, for the entire country in many ways. So playing in front of no fans, great. Playing and all any, anything you got to do to to crown a champion, I think that would be great. Right now, the Muni ought to think about sitting this one out, okay? Because I think ultimately it comes back on uh, we the people. And I go to the Muni. I love the Muni. I wanted to be a Muni kid and never try it out, okay? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but um, no I just time, think they Alvin. should stand down. Come back in 2021. It's got to be like the Olympics. If we're going to do it, let's do it right. I think the arts are just as important as sports. You know, to to some people, the Muni is that that is is on the similar plane with the the St. Louis Baseball Cardinals. And I do believe that the Muni has enough private. Uh, they they certainly have enough private interest, and they've got relationships with with private entities to probably keep them going. But I, I don't think anybody. I don't think. The, I certainly don't think that the Muni should stand down. That would be a a great loss and i know you as you said you enjoy them i think that would be just as great a loss in the minds of many people as sports okay i hear you it would but be but i look i mean no one wants them to stand I, the, the question is going to be a public how health much are, i mean what were you going to say charlie they're going to have five that right now they're not going to decide until july i know but right now they're going to have five have, they would have Wendy, five productions instead of if seven. you don't have a, a vaccine how do you socially distance at the muni do you does everyone sit six feet away from each other in you know in the stands yeah, i think Everything charlie's right i think i think it's a practical help i i have a hard time imagining and i love i'd say a family's been involved in the muni for 60 years i hate to see them have to do it and let's hope they don't but based on what we're seeing now i don't think a venue like the muni is by July or August going to be more, any more likely to be having packed, you know, audiences than the Cardinals are? I mean, like, I hope they can, but it just doesn't seem like, likely to me. And Mike Isaacson and everybody at the Muni, they were very clear in all of their statements <laughs> that they everything they will follow the health department guidelines <laughs> to the to the nth degree. But I just don't think they should be told to stand down. Uh, I, I'm, I'm with Wendy, and I also think that I'm not the, the that. Muni is like. Nobody else has a muni like we do that I know of. It's it's a wonderful thing, and you know, and and if conditions aren't improved, of course they'll cancel. I'd well, love I it if they could push right. it back to September, October. I don't think Alvin's saying they should stand. Are you saying? They yeah, should, I'm just I, saying I, that they. If, if I don't it's think not it's likely. Good to go. Right. I, I hope they just they don't do it. Do it. I think, I think Alvin, can. You, we could get videotapes of you as Nathan Detroit and guys and dolls at Narrick's Hall in That's 1977. Right. We can look at those again. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Bill McClellan, I want to ask you about Tony's, the legendary five-star restaurant from downtown St. Louis that's been in St. Louis for probably three quarters of a century, if not more, is moving to Forsyth Boulevard, uh, Forsyth and Carondelet, I believe, in downtown Clayton, part of the Centene um, expansion. What do you think about that, Bill? I think it's a blow to the city. And, you know, while I go to the Muni once or twice a year, I go to Tony's 
once every seven or eight years. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I've been there, but, but it's an image sort of thing that you have a five-star restaurant in downtown St. Louis and suddenly you don't. I, I, I think it's sad for the city. Agreed. Well, it's kind of tough because the Four Seasons has closed. Kimo's moved out a couple of years ago. That was very Tony's sad. Is moving out. I go to that. I used to go to that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, though, with all these places that are closing, and uh, Tony's five-star restaurant, I don't know that a five-star restaurant will replace it, but it's like water. People are going to find a way, not the owners, people who want to be new entrepreneurs. Every place that closes, it won't be long before another business opens in that same place. So maybe I'm just being hopeful, no, it, but I think this will create new opportunity. And the St. Louis just has to be on the cutting edge of that opportunity. I think Alvin's right. I think it, one of the things, this don't want to be something like the Chamber of Commerce here, but if you look at, at the Cortex area, if you look at Gaslight Square, Cherokee Street, a lot of amazing things are going on in the city that we don't talk about if they're not in the news for something bad. And there's a lot of vibrancy and there's a lot of young people in right. Tower Grove South and so forth. I So I, I don't disagree with Bill. It is, it's just a bad thing when you lose an institution like Tony's. But I, I do think there really is more going on throughout the city and that is not to minimize the, here, here. the things we need to do in North St. Louis. Well said, but, Ray, as usual. Okay, folks, that wraps up the first half of this hour. The second half will feature the county executive for St. Charles County, Steve Ellman, who will be taking our questions, sitting on the hot seat. So we ask you to join us for that, which starts in just a matter of moments here on the Nine Network. Thank you so much. Don't touch that dial. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Hey, thanks for joining us for part two. It is Donnybrook now, kind of like a power play because it's five on one, and the one <laughs> is the county executive for St. Charles County. He's Steve Elman, kind enough to join us for the next 30 or so minutes. Mr. Elman, thank you for joining Donnybrook. How are you? Glad to be with you, Charlie. And how are things in St. Charles? Are you opening up and loosening some of the social distancing restrictions on your businesses and other activities? Well, you know, Charlie, we never closed any businesses to begin with. We took a slightly different approach from St. Louis City and County. Instead of ordering certain businesses to close and allowing others to stay open, what we did is order our uh, residents out here to stay at home except to go to work or to go to businesses that they believed to be essential. And what we achieved with that is really the same thing I believe that St. Louis County did. And if you look at uh, the various uh, places on the web that look at how much people are staying at home, our numbers are identical to St. Louis County. We have about 50% of the people uh, are staying at home under the stay at home order. Uh, actually, St. Louis County only has 49%. We have identical number, 39% who are not going to work. So we, we never ordered anybody to close, but the people basically sent the message to certain businesses, we're not showing up, and guess what? They closed on their own. But yes, now we are going to have been going in to relax that particular order. We're going to go with the governor's uh, suggestion, and we uh, today actually adopted a, an order uh, very much like the governor's. Well, we have questions for you, starting with one from Bill McClellan. Sure. Steve, let me ask you a touchy-feely question. Okay. When our show is over on another network, they're going to have a coronavirus town hall. And one of the people will be Bill Gates. And he'll probably be there in a sweater. And he's got an easygoing manner. It's like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And what his message has been is for the shutdown to work, 
everybody in the neighborhood has to work together. And as far as opening up, we're just not ready to do it yet. We need more testing available. If you're sitting home and you watch Bill Gates give you that advice and you know you're going against it, are you going to feel comfortable like, I'm quite sure that I got this, or is there going to be a voice going, what the heck am I doing going against Bill Gates? Well, I would, uh, I guess I would refer to, refer you to what the governor said. He's got 114 counties and not all of them have the same level of infection and therefore not the same problem. I'm not sure we have the same situation as the state of Washington. I know for a fact that St. Charles County doesn't have the same situation as St. Louis City and County. And if you look at the number of cases per 10,000 people, we're at about 13 in St. Charles County. In St. Louis County, there are 26. And in St. Louis City, there are 32. Okay, so we have a bigger problem than a lot of the outstate counties, that's, that's for sure. But we're nowhere near the situation that they have in St. Louis and St. Louis City. And that's why we're gonna probably go first here. And I think they'll be following at some point, I'm not sure when, but when they get their numbers down, I'm sure they will follow. The most important thing, Bill, is that, you know, we've met the four pillars that the governor identified, including there's been relief for the hospitals. We're not worried about the hospitals being over, overwhelmed like we were three or four weeks ago when, uh, when I instituted uh, my orders at that time. We think we're past that point. And what we've been able to accomplish out here is 14 days in a row where our numbers have gone down. And that's one of the things that the, the federal guidelines say you should do before you start opening up. We've achieved that uh, for a 14 day period. We've had our numbers go down. And again, uh, we have flattened the curve in that, in that sense. Now I know there are people that think that we shouldn't uh, open up or do things differently until the entire region has flattened the curve. And that's really the decision I had to make. Do we go ahead and, and open when we flatten the curve or do we wait until the entire region has? Let me uh, ask you a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me no, go right ahead, Ray. So, I wanna so ask you a question that's less touchy-feely. I looked last night on the state health site and they track it in per 100,000. I thought it said you were at 143. You might've been in the 130s. I don't know. Thought it said 143 per 100,000. That ranks St. Charles County sixth out of the 114 counties in Missouri. Uh, you're right, St. Louis is around 300. The highest, interest, interestingly, is out in Western Missouri, Saline County, which is at 760 for reasons nobody seems to know in Marshall, Missouri. But of the six, the two St. Louis, yours is higher than Kansas City, St. Charles is it. And, and I guess my question is, even if you've seen 14 days in St. Charles County, and I wouldn't question that go down, once you open up, and St. Louis County people and St. Louis City people who are looking to go to the businesses that you're opening start heading out. What do you do when you go back up? Because the, we, there's no wall between St. Charles and St. St. Louis County, and the virus certainly doesn't respect the borders. It, it occurs to me, that, and we all, by the way, want to see businesses open up. It's just every the health experts generally think we're moving somewhere between 14 days and a month too soon, how do you, how do you explain, how you can't, don't you see you're connected to St. Louis City and County? Yes, we do. And we've, uh, we've got to have faith in, especially St. Louis County, because they're most adjacent and most of the people coming out here and not only coming out here, but going to Franklin and Jefferson County, who are also following the governor's uh, plan. Um, we have to rely upon the fact, uh, and I have confidence that St. Louis County has done the same sort of job that we've done on uh, contact tracing. Okay, from the March 18th, the very first day that we had, a, we had a positive in this county, we called that person and we've called every person since then. And we have contact with them every day. We tell them they need to quarantine and they need to stay home. We also talk to them about who they've had contact with. And sometimes if they've had close contact with people, we tell them to stay home as well and to quarantine. Uh, when we first started doing this, uh, we had anywhere from 10 to 12 contacts uh, normally. Because of all the stay at home orders, the good thing is that recently and today even, we're having 
on average two contacts. So people are definitely having fewer contacts. But here's the important thing. Now that we're relaxing the stay at home order, it becomes crucial that we don't relax our efforts on the quarantine order. And I think some people um, get those mixed up. The, the stay at home is directed at you and me and everybody else, whether we have it or not. And it's a precautionary move. The quarantine order is directed to those people who we know have it or are very likely to have it. And we need to make sure. And again, in a sense, we're relying upon St. Louis County to do as good a job as I think we've done on identifying the people who have it, keeping them home, so that if you or myself uh, decide to go to a restaurant uh, next Monday evening, we can be sure, not that it's totally safe, but at least we'll know that our various jurisdictions have made every effort possible to make sure that the person sitting behind them in the restaurant isn't infected with with the disease. But, but isn't isn't that the tricky right isn't isn't that the tricky thing about novel coronavirus, Mr. Elman, that it there is that that two week or however long it turns out to be, we 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 continue to learn new things about this every hour. So you've got an incubation period. That that incubation period, does that make you uncomfortable at all? Does the incubation period? When they're asymptomatic, when people perhaps are carrying it, but they are asymptomatic. Well, that's true. But if, if that's if that's going to be the determining factor, we may never be able to reopen until the until we have a a, a vaccine and there's absolutely no risk involved. But so, Steve, I don't think, you I don't have think no idea know. what's Pardon. going to happen in the next two or three weeks. That because St. Louis County is adjacent and the city and other parts of the state who then could come right over to St. Charles County, bring the virus with them, infect people all around them, go home, because most of us don't know if we have the COVID-19 virus or not. Overwhelming majority of people in the state don't know if they have it or not. So you use the word faith. So basically, you're hoping this works out. Well, let me ask you, Alvin, do you think everybody's going to, on Monday evening, all of a sudden run out and go to a restaurant or go to a business? That is I don't know, restaurant? but you don't know either. I, I do know that given what we've done before, we've done a good job of keeping our numbers at half of what St. Louis County numbers are. I think our people have worked very hard to make sure that those who have the virus or have been close to someone who has the virus are staying home. Now, if we weren't doing a good job on that, or I suspected that St. Louis County wasn't doing a good job at that, then I think we have a real problem. No, but, the way I see it, um, everybody. This is, is a that, good example. We are all in it together. I, I think that's true. Now, let me ask you this. Isn't it true, though, in the city and the county, we, we kind of, are pretending that they're closed, but let's be real, everybody, because when you think about what is open in the city and the county, that includes liquor stores, that includes grocery stores, that includes farmers markets in Kirkwood, that includes hotels, bed and breakfast, some daycare. Let's not pretend that the city and the county are closed. Now, I don't know how you would have a tattoo parlor or a Manny Petty place. I, will they be open, Steve? I mean, Will, will I be able to get a tattoo or a manicure in St. Charles? They uh, they will be open, but if nobody shows up, I don't know why they would be open. Well, and, that's, and that's, I guess, what we're going to have to see. And maybe next next week this time, you all have a better idea on exactly how the people responded to this. But I think it comes down to, do you want the government to make a decision here for everybody? Or do you want to you want to create some opportunities for people to make their own decision? I think. Did you know it took two and a half years after 9-11 before we had the same level of people flying in this country? Mm. I think there's a lot of people out there that are very conservative. And I think I think a lot of them are not going to run out on the first day. But I'm willing to go ahead and, and at least uh, create a situation where uh, if they want to put their faith in the restaurateur, that the restaurateur has done everything that they possibly can do to make sure they have a safe place to eat and they don't feel it's dangerous 
we're going to let them make that decision. What I'm really doing here is, is instead of the county government making the decision, we're really putting the pressure on business owners and we're putting the pressure on restaurateurs. They're going to have to change their entire marketing scheme. It's not just going to be, hey, we got great food. It's we got great food and we've got a very safe environment here. Someone asked me the other day, am I going to, am I going to go eat in a restaurant next week? And my response was, only if I know the proprietor and I have confidence that they have done everything that they can possibly do to keep me safe. Now, they can't guarantee I'll be safe, and I can't guarantee anybody be safe, but they can guarantee that they're going to do the social distancing, they're going to clean up, they're going to do all the things that they need to do, just like we've been doing the, 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 uh, uh, the contract tracing to make sure we identify the people who are infected and make sure that they stay home and don't go to the same restaurant that other people are going to be going to, uh, to one extent or another, next week. Steve, you know, in the county right now, there's a little revolt, especially led by the Republican council members to open things up. Do you think that you would have had the moral authority to say you were going to extend the shutdown? Or do you think that the people in, in St. Charles County were getting ready to open up anyway? Uh, no, I think, I think that they would have respected our decision. Um, and like I said earlier, if, if we had the sort of numbers that the city that the city has, I don't think we would have opened up. The fact is that we had half the number of infections and the fact that we felt very comfortable with the, the contact tracing that we had done is the reason we opened up. And, and if we had uh, 32 instead of, uh, Ray says it's 14 now, I think a day or two, I thought it was 13. But, uh, you know, the city has 32, we have 14. I don't know, maybe the city's going up by now. Uh, I understand why they're not opening, but I, I would just hope people would understand why we think we have a, a, a different situation here. It doesn't, uh, doesn't lead me to believe that we're going to go back to normal next, next Monday. I think it's going to be a very slow process. I think people are going to be very careful where they go. I think, uh, and I've talked to a lot of restaurateurs, Okay, I call five or six people that I know that uh, that are in that business, and there was only one of them that last week who was really anxious to get open. The rest all said, "Boy, you know, we're you're putting a lot of pressure on us. We're going to have to really do a good job because obviously they don't want to be the restaurant where you know people go and, and and got infected. That would that would be a disaster for them in terms of the future of their business. So I just see the whole thing happening much slower." I see people being a lot more careful, at least the people in St. Charles County. Um, you know, they, uh, they vote conservative, and I think basically they are, and I think they'll be conservative about this. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a challenge to anybody who wants to open. And like I said, we have never ordered anybody to close. Right. These businesses okay. could have been open all along, but they closed because nobody showed up. On Steve Tuesday, I think some people will show up, if they feel safe, well, some people will show up whether they feel safe or not. We know that. But I think most of the people will only show up if they feel safe. And I think, uh, I think it's going to be an interesting uh, experience. And I, I guess uh, what I'm guilty of is having faith in the people of St. Charles County that they'll make some intelligent decisions here. Steve, um, first of all, welcome. Welcome to Donnie Brook. Um, but 99% of us haven't been tested. All the, the public health officials are saying we need more testing before we open up. All of them. I mean, from Dr. Fauci on down, all of them say it. Sometimes they can't say it while they're standing next to the president because he gets mad. But all of them are saying it. I've had probably six healthcare professionals, epidemiologists, doctors on my show, radio show that you've been kind enough to come on, on KTRS. And, and all of them have said the same thing. They all talk about you know, washing your hands, but they all say we've got to go more slowly. They can't be right, and, you, and go, let's even take you out of it. Take Governor Parson. We've had three of the top six days, over 300 new cases in the last week in the state of Missouri. And apparently he doesn't consider the St. Louis area to be part of the state of Missouri, but he can't be right and they're right. It's just how how is it that we should trust our governor, who is under intense political pressure to open, over public health officials. Because once again, 
We've got 114 counties. You say we're number six. Uh, there's uh, three that I know that have orders stricter than the governor's. So that means there's St. Charles and two others uh, that are in the top six that, uh, that don't. And, um, you know, uh, I guess the question is, would you rather have the governor just make the decision for everybody? Or do you agree with his position, which is we're not going to uh, order the people in St. Louis City and St. Louis County to start opening up business if they don't believe they're ready to do it. So, um, you know, there are people out there that think, uh, you know, the governor should make this decision. I'm a local official. I think it's uh, wise for him to uh, set a standard for the state and allow uh, jurisdictions that think they have a bigger problem than the state as a whole uh, to go ahead and have a tougher standard. But, uh, you know, I, I think you'd agree that, uh, that this decision is best made locally. And, uh, you know, we've made a decision and it was not an easy one. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I knew when I made this decision, whichever way I went, there would be some people unhappy. But it was based upon not only what the uh, regional uh, hospitals and, and experts were telling us, but uh, just uh, what I saw happening uniquely in our county. And just the fact that I have the confidence that if you give the people the freedom, they're going to, uh, they're not going to abuse it. They're not going to do anything stupid. And we're not going to have giant parties uh, on, uh, on Monday night all over St. Charles County. I don't agree I, I, with you, by the way, that it should be done locally. I think it should have been done nationally, arguably in, at the latest in early March, if not late February, and it should have been done nationally. And we nationally? Have and would you have had Congress make that decision? I would have had the president make that decision and, and have the whole country do what the health advisors were begging him to do for a month, which well, is to shut the whole country down. Yes, I would. I was. Yes. I, my, I personally was happy when uh, somebody reminded the president about the 10th Amendment. And the federal government has those powers the states have given them, and they didn't give the federal government the power to deal with a crisis like this. And that's I why you personally might just think that's... Well, uh, I think that's the right way because I think we got 50 states with 50 different situations and Missouri has 114 county with counties with 114 different situations. And, and, and Steve, within one of those 114 counties, you have the power. Have you had a conversation with yourself that, you know, is there a number, if, if you begin to see any kind of movement uh, in the wrong direction in St. Charles County, is there an agreed upon threshold there where you would say, okay, everybody out of the water? Uh, yes, yes, and no. Okay. Thought about it a lot. <laughs> Thought about it a lot. Yes, we do need to adjust if, if I'm wrong. And it's not me, it's me and, and our health department. Health department. And, and, you know, I've listened to them along the way. And uh, it wasn't an easy decision, but but no, we don't have a we don't have a, a number in mind okay. right now. Okay. But uh, we we do have uh, uh, you know we look at the numbers every day as they come in. We continue to quarantine people, um, and we'll just have to play it uh, as we go forward. What about the Frontier Nursing Home in St. Charles? That has been. Uh, Really, a real bad situation. How, how many deaths there now? Fifteen, maybe. Yeah, that 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 is a that is a bad situation. But it's very, it's very instructive. Again, uh, when we looked at how effective has the stay-at-home order been, or not been, um, all those people in that nursing home have stayed home. Okay, the stay-at-home order didn't affect the nursing home situation at all. And of the thirty-two or however the thirty-two. Uh, deaths that we've had, 71% have been in nursing homes. And 80% of the people have been over 70 years of age. So the people being impacted by this are the elderly. And almost all the people impacted already had a prior existing condition. So 71% of our people, the stay at home order really had nothing to do with their death. They were already uh, they were already staying at home in that nursing home. And unfortunately, the virus got in there very early. And of course, once it gets in, I'm sure it got in before we even start issuing any orders. 
And once it got there, it's, there's just not a whole lot you can do. And if you start bringing people out, then you create additional risk for everyone else. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrible situation. But once again, um, you know, I have been talking to people, uh, talked to a bunch of pastors this afternoon about, you know, opening their services and uh, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday. And, and, and we were very, uh, we were warning them that they have to be very, very careful. They got to do the social distancing. They got to do all the sanitary cleanup and all those sorts of things. And most importantly, we emphasize the fact that it's the elderly and, and those that that have prior existing uh, conditions. These are the people most at risk. And, and, and the churches need to be aware of that. And they need to take extra precautions on those folks and they probably are going to listen to their pastors more than they're going to listen to me or to you, Charlie. So, you know, we, we are being very cautious and we are trying to, again, educate people on the risk because there are still risks. And the people who want to be, who don't like any risk need to stay home. And the people who are willing to accept some risk uh, should look and make sure that the business they're going to has done everything it possibly can do to keep them safe. And if it hasn't, they should find a different restaurant to go to. Well, Steve, Steve, you, I uh, mean, my uh, guess is oh, that ahead, uh, um, Fifth Street is gonna be jam packed here in the next week. So so if that does happen, what are you gonna do? I'm sorry, Alvin, yeah. I didn't, what, what did you say? To, uh, um, what is it, Fifth Street right there in St. Charles? Main Street, Main Street. Uh, Main Street, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Street, Fifth Street St. Is Charles. The old capitalist. Um, all right, people are together, hundreds of people. Street's packed, nobody's, everybody's one foot from each other, not six feet. What, what would you do? What can you what do? What would we do? We would uh, send the police and, and ask them to disperse. That's what we've been doing in our parks for the last month. We, uh, very early, we closed the playgrounds, we closed the picnic shelters and, the, and the, any inso indoor facilities, uh, but we kept open the trails. But when you go to our parks, it says we require social distancing. We've doubled our police in the parks on the weekends. And if, if people aren't distancing, if they're getting together in a group and congregating, a police officer will go up and say, would, would you please uh, please move on and, and keep your distance? And, and we've had uh, no problems with that. I assume that if things get, as you suggest, that we'll, we'll have the same sort of approach. We'll, we'll go to people and, uh, and ask them to uh, uh, disperse and ask them to practice social distancing. And, um, you know, the, the order is against the business uh, for not enforcing it. Hey, Steve, so we may have to deal with businesses that don't cooperate. Are, we'll just have to see. Steve, are you or your health department urging people to wear masks? Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. I've, got, I've got two masks out in my car and <laughs> I don't shop much, but <laughs> The three or four times I had to go in, in somewhere and buy something, I, I put my mask on and I'm sure I, I look as silly as everybody else does, but we're all getting used to it. And, uh, and yeah, we encourage people. We, we talk to the fair? pastors today and encourage them that they can get their people to wear masks. We think that's, uh, we think that that's what they ought to do. Now, are we ordering them to wear, wear masks? No, because I don't believe in making orders that we can't enforce. And there's no way we could enforce something like that. Are we recommending it? Are we encouraging it? Absolutely. Dave, have this is you kind talked of a, to the go, St. Louis oh, go County? Go ahead, Bill. Check, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Have you talked to uh, Sam Page, the St. Louis County executive, about your, your plans to open up? Oh, I, I talk to Sam almost every day. And, 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 and are, are you in agreement on this? Well, we talked today. You know, we, we, we talked on a... a, a phone call this morning uh, with a whole bunch of business leaders. And I, I said then what I, what I told you earlier, I said, uh, I said, St. Louis County has a different situation that we do. If we had uh, double the number of cases like St. Louis County does, I said, we would probably be doing what Sam's doing and, 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 and the mayor of St. Louis. Steve uh, Elman, we, we're flat out of time. Uh, thanks everybody for all your great questions and comments. And Steve Elman, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule as the county executive for St. Charles County for joining us on uh, the power play. Hey, Charlie, as you know, I'm a big fan of your show, so it's been a real <laughs> thrill to be on it. Thank you. Thank you so much. All, All right. right. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next week at this time. Be safe. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network.